Hi, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog. Along with Jeff Kolpak, I'm Don Izzo. We've reached the last week of the basketball regular season. I can't believe we're saying that since we just started covering basketball, but here we are for the final week of the regular season in the Summit League where the Bison and South Dakota State enter this final week. Jeffrey tied each at 12-3, and three, and we'll find out who's going to be the champion come Saturday. The Bison will play Thursday at Oral Roberts. South Dakota State ends with their rivals with USD on Saturday. The Bison got two big wins, beating IUPUI on Thursday in what was not the prettiest of games. They followed it up with a hard-fought win against Fort Wayne, who was the hottest team in the league coming on Saturday to one seven in a row. These are two big wins and now sets up basically winner-take-all, and the Bison got to get some help. It does. I actually called the league office this morning and inquired into the tiebreaker as we were doing it yep. ourselves, of course, and they didn't want anything to do with it because they said, well, let's just wait till after the Thursday games and sort it out. But I think you can know this, that NDSU needs South Dakota to beat South Dakota yes. State. And, of course, they have to beat Oral Roberts on the road to have a shot at the number one seed. I think after that, everything's a moot point because yep. the records really don't mean much. And then you got IUPUI and Denver who don't factor into the equation because they are 5-9 and nine in the league. Yeah. So uh, I think it comes down to those two games. The thing that it's interesting here because the tiebreaker is record against common opponent. This is We were just doing this, it seems like, a couple months ago. We were talking about the NDSU football team with Illinois State. The difference is, obviously, NDSU played South Dakota State. Then it goes to your record against the next highest placed team. Well, against Fort Wayne, they both NDSU and SDSU both split. The difference now ends up being Oral Roberts because the Jacks spanked Oral Roberts on Saturday. They swept them, and the Bison have to win against uh, ORU to keep that going because the next up, as you mentioned, is USD. The Bison lost in Vermilion right. while the Jacks already won, and if they win on Saturday, there will be the advantage, and SDSU will be the number one seed. And the Bison are going to have to play better than they did against uh, IUPUI, as we just saw there. They came, uh, they struggled from the, from it the field. It was 9-2 to start the game. They were down. And it got to the point where you wonder if they were going to score in yeah. the first half, nope. but uh, they got it going. Of course, you have Lawrence Alexander. In the second half, that guy is by far one of the best players in the league, and you can make a case where in the second half, he's one of the best players in the country. Yeah. He did it again. He puts the team on his back time and time again. A lot of people are talking, especially on the blog today, about Dave Richmond being the coach of the year. I think... He's definitely going to get some votes. I think Craig Smith at South Dakota should definitely get some votes as well. The Coyotes were not good last season. Here they are at 8-6 with the potential to finish maybe 10-6 and six in the league uh, if they win their last two games. Boy, what a job he's done there. And we've talked about how tough it is to recruit A to the Dakota Dome, B to Vermillion, to be 10-6 and six in the league in your first year. Wow, that's impressive if they do that. It's going to be one of those two yeah. because – and I think Dave Richmond, the expectations were – low for this Correct. team. They, you thought maybe 13, 14 wins would be a good year. They now they've 20. passed 20. Yeah. And he's done it with a team that just, uh, you know, had one guy in Lorix Alexander who wasn't even a proven scorer until no. this year. You had Corey Brown, a returning starter, who you needed more points. He was the defensive stopper last year. You had to replace so many points, so many rebounds, and so much leadership from last year. And Dave, I think, uh, you got to credit the coach because yeah. that's where it starts. The big thing going forward is Corey Brown's health, though, Jeffrey. He has not been the same since he tweaked his knee at Denver. Still has not looked healthy. We saw that against IUPUI. We saw it. He fouled out in the game against Fort Wayne. They need him to get healthy. That's why it's big this next. They have basically 13 days off outside. They play one game over the next 13 days to get him healthy for whatever is going to lie down the road in Sioux Falls. That's right, and you're talking about a seven-man roster here, right. essentially. They only go Paul Miller and Dex Dexter Werner on yep. the bench, and now if you take Corey Brown out of the mix, you're going into the tournament with six <sighs> healthy guys. And, and theoretically, uh, you may have to play three games in four days. Right, but they've done it so far, and <laughs> don't expect Lawrence Alexander is yeah. the top three in the country in minutes played, I, and that's only going to go up. Why we're harping on the number one seed is obviously for those that don't know, if you win the regular season conference tournament, don't win the postseason right. tournament, you're automatically qualified for the NIT, which NDSU obviously has never been in. But obviously they're thinking about the NCAs all the way. You there. asked Dave that question, okay? Because <laughs> what do you think about the NIT? They don't. Yeah, they're they, not. They, thinking they don't about want to that. hear anything not, about not it. Not about that right now. One word on the Bison women. If they win their final game against Denver on Thursday, they'll clinch the sixth seed and avoid playing that opening day, which also avoids playing USD or South Dakota State. In, that's how big that game was on Saturday to beat Fort Wayne on the road for them. 
Well, and they need to get back on the ship a little bit. They've had a late season slide, and I still think they're going to be a dangerous team in the tournament, at least in the I first think they round. Beat one. I think they can. I think they can win if a game. If you don't have South Dakota and South Dakota State Anything's in your bracket, that. yeah, yep. you have a you have a certain chance to win that game. All right, Jeffrey, I know you were mincing all over the numbers in Indianapolis yeah. while you were watching youth hockey this weekend as the NFL Combine wraps up today as we tape this. John Crockett and Kyle Emanuel were both there in Indianapolis, both impressed, I think, for some of the scouts that have not seen these guys up close. Let's first start with the Buck Buchanan winner because he went yesterday. Mike Mayock couldn't say enough good things about him. If you got him on your side, I think that's a, that'll get a lot of teams' attention. He runs a 4.77, which is top 10 in the 40-yard dash. Then he benches 27 reps, which is pretty good. His shuttle was good. As we look at some of his highlights from yesterday, I thought he was fantastic. Well, and our guy Jason Willey, too, is really yeah. impressive. He's a guy, uh, Big E's buddy from Milwaukee who, who strung for us. You know, this is a big part of a guy from an FCS, and to watch him do the 60 here, 477 is, is outstanding for a DN. Now, is he big enough? Boy, he sure, certainly looks that. 27 times, by the way, for that bench press is is good. Yeah. I mean that 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 puts you in the ball game there and he's also was among the top 10 players in the cone drill and the shuttle. And again, <laughs> what is the cone drill and shuttle? Well, You're that's seeing one of them right yeah, now. Yeah, and that, that's one of those things that, you know, the GMs and, and yeah, coaches all that. pour over, but <laughs> I go back to can the guy make plays? What yes. position? What position suits him best in the NFL? I don't think it's DN. No. I, 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 I got to believe it's got to be some sort of outline, outside linebacker spot. They also harped on the fact how much he played special teams. And that's where I think that his experience in the FCS is going to be the biggest factor because remember, Chris Kleiman told us, I think it was the week of the Sam Houston State game, is that, or after South Dakota State, we have to move Kyle Emanuel on special teams. And you remember, I think it was 2013, you and I were on the same block. Why is Kyle Emanuel playing special teams? That's because he was so good at it. And everyone will remember that tackle he had against Zenner. His downfield ability to make plays, that's where I think he can make a roster come July and early August in, in preseason games to showing off that athleticism. And I also look at the character issue with yep. him. The guy is just outstanding. He's a good student. He's an honor student. Uh, he's a leader. And, you know, how much do, do, do NFL teams put stock in that? They should. They should. Pete Carroll certainly yes. does. And look what happens. And that at works the, there. The Seahawks, and right. It works with the Patriots as well. I think, I don't know you know, improve stock. We could debate that between, you know, the cows come home for the next two months. Do I think he's going to get drafted? I think he helped his chances there. I really believe that, that maybe a sixth or a seventh round pick on day three, I think he might get picked now. All right. I think that 40 time really yeah. put him in the conversation and the bench press, like we said. The cows come home. You're, you're, you're really <laughs> adapting to the North Dakota. I try. I try my best there. Yeah. Now for John Crockett, his 40 time was not the best, but granted, that's not his deal. His deal is being elusive and moving and getting shifty and being and breaking away from guys. You're not going to see that in a 40 yard dash. I I still would have liked to have seen a sub 4-6. I just mm. would have liked to have seen a sub 4-6. I think Zenner Zach was 4-6-1. 4-6-1. Yeah. And, right. uh, you know, I, I wonder if he's going to have a do-over or not because you can't do it over. Do it the pro day. You can do it the yep. pro day at NDSU. Yep. I would bet he may give that a shot. Uh, four, I thought it'd be 4-5-5, five, five, to be honest with you. You know who had the best of the Missouri Valley running backs, and it's no surprise to me, is David Dave Johnson. Johnson. I mean, he was fantastic, and now he certainly improved his draft stock where he could be a day two guy. We're saying second or third round pick. We've seen this for the last three years with that guy. He's a special athlete that should have been playing, I think, in the Big 12 or the Big 10. Well, yes, and a lot of Missouri Valley opponents would agree with you. He's, <laughs> Granted, this last two guys we talked about probably could have been playing. Right, he's conferences. also 240 yes. pounds, mind you. This yep. is a 240-pound guy yep. running those kind of 40 times. Correct. And plus what we saw when the Bison played Northern Iowa this year, you saw some shiftiness, especially on the kickoff return. Yep. He made guys miss. And when you're 240 and you make guys miss, you got to have that on film. That's pretty tough. You to see beat. him on special teams in the NFL? Can he be a, a kick returner guy? Because those guys, you know, there's wiry, small guys that are doing that in the NFL. I don't see that. I'll ask yeah. Illinois State if they think he should be on it. <laughs> he returned one against them. He did. He did that. And he, of course, he had that great one handed reception against NDSU this year uh, in the game that the Bison lost to UNI. So we'll see what happens. NDSU's Pro Day, by the way, March 26th. So about a month from now, where the scouts will come back and we'll see. The biggest teller, I'll go back to 2009, when the scouts held back uh, Cole Heckendorf and, and uh, they Joe did that with Joe Mays as well the yeah. year before. That's a good sign. Right. Anytime the scouts want to talk to you when the thing is over, that's always a good deal. So we'll see what happens then. All right, folks, big week coming. The Bison at Oral Roberts on Thursday. Complete coverage of that. We'll know the seeds come Saturday night where the Bison will be placed for the Summit League Tournament. For Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. That's the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog.